Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, PCN director charged by FCCC. More consultations for bus fare increase. And dead baby hammerhead sharks found in Suva. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission has filed charges against People's Community Network National Director Semiti Ngalawasa as the inquiries into the controversial Langilangi housing project continues. Ngalawasa has been charged for failure to furnish information to the FCCC under its act. Akusita Thale reports this resulted from the inquiry on the Langilangi housing project that was given to the Commission to carry out late last year following concerns raised by members of the public. PCN's National Director Simitin Galawasa was given a week from the 17th to the 23rd of last month to submit proper documentation on how the Langilangi housing project funds were used. To date, there has been no paper trail filed to the Commission which were requested by way of requisition for information notice. Well, they had sent an email saying we will give uh, the information and we were hoping that they would and that's why we, uh, from 23rd January we've allowed them time to submit the information and they still have not and that is why we have no alternative but to uh, proceed to file uh, the matter in court. Government injected $12.7 million into the project, including construction of 143 units, road infrastructure and electricity. So far, only 117 units have been completed and Joel Abraham says they will leave no stones unturned to find the truth. The idea is to get to the bottom of it to find what the truth is. And to find the truth, we need to be able to review the evidences. So we don't base our investigations on hearsay, on a he said, she said thing. We don't base our investigation on just uh, somebody's opinion. We base our investigation on evidences. The FCCC says they will also look at other alternatives on what they are required to do in terms of gathering more information. The charges have been filed and they are at liberty to provide it uh, uh, with the highest agency. So the sooner the better. And if they don't, then, uh, well, that's for the courts to decide now. Several attempts to get comments from the PCN National Director has been unsuccessful. Akusita Tali, FBC News. More consultations are expected before a decision is taken on the proposal to increase bus fares. Chair of the Independent Bus Fare Review Committee, Joel Abraham, says they will need to look at a cost analysis for bus operators and evaluate the expenditure trend from 2017 to 2018. Maggie Boyle reports. The stalemate on the review of bus fares is set to continue. In December when we had the meeting with them, I had said to them, if you give us full information, because this is so critical to Fiji, I won't go and leave, our staff won't go and leave, we'll process this. And we did not go and leave, we were waiting for the bus industry. On 18th we wrote back to them saying more information is needed. Today we had a meeting, we've given them the same information that you need to come back, provide full and complete information. Fiji Bus Operators Association President Richard Lau says bus owners are in a dire situation with their businesses suffering. We're hoping common sense prevails and that uh, some resolution is uh, provided. However, Abraham maintains that no decision will be made until all the necessary financials are submitted by bus operators. Fairness is the key word here. We must maintain fairness. The Fijians have uh, put their faith and trust in FCCC and we will uphold that. The FBOA wants an increase of 15%, which will see bus fares starting from $1. Maggie Boyle, FBC News.
Fisheries officers will conduct an investigation following the discovery of dead hammerhead baby sharks in the Samambula River Bailey Bridge yesterday morning. Minister for Fisheries Semi Kuroi Lavisao believes someone might have caught the marine species using a gill net and dumped it at the site. Kuroi Lavisao reiterates the need to protect the species as it is endangered and is protected under the Offshore Fisheries Management Act and the Endangered and Protected Species Act. Savaita Thambor reports. Catching hammerhead sharks is illegal and heavy penalties will be imposed if anyone is found guilty. For individuals it's about 10,000 to 50,000 and for companies it could uh, be from 20,000 to 100,000 and it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Corilla Bissau says it is the breeding season for hammerheads and therefore it is normal to see the marine species congregate along the coastlines and the shallow waters and also into the river tributary. Uh, the baby sharks would come up uh, the rivers because uh, they are more protected to other predators. Uh. The breeding season for this species is from September to April and within this period fishermen are not allowed to catch any hammerhead sharks. Market vendors at the Bailey Bridge were quite surprised to have seen the dead baby sharks. It was surprised when we saw the hammerhead shark babies yesterday morning and we believe someone might have dumped it here on Tuesday night. We even threw some into the water due to its bad smell and it's more than 50 of them. Smaller ones uh, that were about uh, 24 to 25 uh, centimeters from the picture, they will be about uh, two or three weeks. Korola Bissau has confirmed that they are now working in partnership with Rewa Provincial Council in trying to create a marine protected areas within the Rewa River so that sharks are protected. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. The Indian Embassy, proposed to be built at the idol land at Lot 2 Botanical Garden in Suva, will not affect the garden. FBC News has been informed that the proposed site beside the Fiji Museum is away from the actual garden and at the current site where the car park is. A number of people have started to raise objections on this and are going around signing petitions which says, All of us save Suva's botanical gardens. One of the petitioners, businesswoman Mere Samisoni, says she is objecting for botanical garden to be sold to an overseas country. She says Fijians own the garden as it is a national heritage. The plan is still in provisional stages and no approval has been given as yet. The Ministry of Local Government says they are aware of the rezoning plans. However, they're expected to reveal more details later. People have time until the 25th of this month to raise their objections with the Suva City Council. Five years ago, the government had announced the land exchange between Fiji and India. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, or UNICEF, will be working with relevant authorities in Fiji to create awareness on cyberbullying. Over 70% of young people online worldwide have fallen victim to cyberbullying. UNICEF Pacific Island Country's Rep Sheldon Yet says while they do not have exact numbers on Fiji, they are still aware that this is an issue faced by young people here as well. Hence, he says, they will be working specifically with communities to address this issue from this year to make them aware of this threat and how best it can be dealt with. Parents need to take a role. So do teachers, so do other community leaders, so do peers. Kids need to also look after other kids. The internet is a fantastic tool for learning, for participation, for making sure that children's voices can be heard, for ensuring the right of participation is there for children. But we also need to make sure that there's safeguards in place and that we watch and ensure it's not being violated. Still to come, banks clear air on work contracts and loans. An LTA to take a different approach. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bulefe, Nabondo, and a city. Why I was it says, a Lombasa.
The issue of contracts being a hindrance for loan approvals was brought to the Fiji Association of Banks' attention today. During the associa association submission to the Standing Committee on Economic Affairs on the Reserve Bank of Fiji 2017-2018 annual report, it was clarified that a majority of Fijians are on contracts. Therefore, banks do not see contract terms of any individual. Anna Ravulo reports. The Fiji Association of Banks has reiterated that contracts does not hinder anyone's loan being granted by the banks. The issue arose after a member of the committee raised it during the submission. Um, one year contracts of five years and uh, the difficulty of getting loans for those on, on those contracts because of the requirements of the banks. I understand that you're talking about some of the civil servants who are working on the contract basis. If they are rejected, they are not rejected because of the contract, they are being rejected because of the other reasons. However, it's a different case altogether if expatriates are involved. But I think the contract becomes more relevant for expatriate staff because they're here on short-term basis, uh, they want to also buy houses, they also want to buy cars. But once they finish their contract, they have to go back to the country. Minam has clarified that in order for a loan to be granted, you need to show you can pay your loan, have a good track record, no criminal record, and must meet the internal requirement of the bank. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority will now be taking a new approach towards its enforcement activities. Chief Executive Samuel Simpson says they want to become an intelligence-based organization to catch the culprits off guard. This as LTA impounded 56 motor vehicles involved in illegal operations in the first five weeks of this year. These 56 vehicles included 18 private cars which had taxi meters installed illegally to operate as unauthorized taxis. The LTA chief executive says they are now using new methods to clamp down on such activities. We are planning in the near future to change the way we uh, manage our enforcement. Uh, we will become very much an intelligence-led organization. So we will be out there looking to see what's happening and then we will target our enforcement action based upon our intelligence of uh, what's happening on the ground. Simpson says they are also concerned with the manipulation of taxi meters in the private cars and have begun an investigation with the Fiji Devonian Customs Service in relation to non-payment of tax on illegal earnings. This move has been welcomed by the Fiji Taxi Association. They're doing better what we supposed to be done for last two years, but was, nothing was happening. But now things are now they have been improved by LTA. They're doing very good job. All illegal are stopping down now. The LTA has increased its activity this year on the road, and Simpson says they will work hard to ensure the safety of all road users through continuous enforcement activity. He says the team is also monitoring taxis that are operating illegally from another zone. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Fiji's roving ambassador for the Pacific, Ratu Seremaya Vavuilapi, has presented his credentials to the Samoan government. Samoa and Fiji have both expressed their commitment to strengthening ties. It's a partnership that goes back 40 years. The state visit by Prime Minister Tuilaepa Sailele Malielangaoi last August to Fiji to meet with Prime Minister Frank Bainimarama has seen the Pacific leaders rekindle their ties. The Vuilati hopes to continue working closely with their Samoan counterpart to further strengthen their partnership. He began his career in the civil service in 1976 and also represented Fiji in rugby. Thousands of residents living between Nandi and Lautoka will be facing water disruptions from Saturday evening till Monday morning. The Water Authority will be carrying out urgent repair on their defective portion of the main supply located at Batiri Vaturu in Nandi. Board Director Kamal Gander says as a result of this defect, they are there is a lot of water every day. Water trucks will be carting water in the affected areas. There is a lot of water running through our high pressure lines. So on our DN600 line that is running from Vaturu all the way to Nagando, which is a very high pressure line. So there is a water pipeline cross connection uh, chamber at Batiri land, which is, a, which is about uh, 
say, three kilometers away from Vaturu and about 15 kilometers away from Nagando. So there is a tea, there has been a best in the rubber from a joina, which is a tea, so which has now been best. And as a result, there is a lot we are losing close to around five megaliter of water per day. Everyday home chores have been made much more convenient for the women of Navakawao village in South Taviuni with the provision of solar power. Eleanor Tarangai View reports with almost all homes in the village now solar electrified, women are working to improve the comfort and living standards of their families. Nine-year-old Lania Taleoni Moka runs a successful tailoring business thanks to the 24-hour, seven-day-a-week power supply. I'm grateful for the provision of the solar power because it has brought us many good and new things. For these women, the supply of power means it will be much easier to do household chores. If I don't complete my chores during the day, I'm able to do it at night, mostly weaving and making brooms. Before I would get up at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. to make our breakfast over the open fire, now with solar power I can make breakfast at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. My children are benefiting the most because they no longer have to use kerosene lanterns to study. Nabakawao village consists of 118 homes with 120 families and a population of more than 700 people. The installation of the solar home system units also gives villagers easier access to TV, radio, cell phones and internet. The only side effect to have solar 24-7 is that our children are now on Facebook also 24-7. 72 homes have been fitted with the solar systems and 10 more are expected to be installed this year. All 118 homes are expected to be solar electrified by 2020. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. The world is in the midst of its warmest. 10 years since records began with the last four years the hottest ever. That is according to meteorological scientists who say we can expect a global temperature rise of 1.5 degrees in the next five years, something that is seen as a critical threshold for climate change. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, he will tell us about Manchester City's win, but Akusita is here now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break, bank starts ATM fees. And in growing Fiji milk producers get good news. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Banks in Fiji are slowly applying the 50 cents fee on ATM withdrawals. During their submission to the Standing Committee on Economic Affairs on the Reserve Bank of Fiji August 2017, July 2018 annual report, Fiji Association of Banks member Saud Minam says they have applied the no fee when using FPOS and are slowly moving to ATMs. Minam says ANZ used to charge $1.50 for cash withdrawals but is now charging only 50 cents. He says other banks are following up on this. These are the steps which association looks into it uh, towards working towards with the government as well as the regulators, um, where the benefits can be passed on to the end users and, and the, it becomes a little bit more of a digital. Over 8,000 customers of Central Finance Limited will benefit from the new partnership with Vodafone Fiji Limited. The partnership will see customers of Central Finance Limited accessing their loans through the MPISA platform. And with an endeavor to serve a bigger customer base, the MPISA will also enable customers to repay their loan by using the platform. And for Vodafone Fiji, the partnership is evident of the many opportunities that can be provided through mobile technology. 
We will use Vodafone m -Pesa service to give out loans to civil servants, bank officers, private sector employees in corporate organizations who are mostly based in remote areas and do not have access to banks. But this partnership opens up a lot of opportunities for small financing companies who cannot go around the country setting up branches and hiring staff and all the associated operational costs. So this, this is an era of branchless uh, financial services. Sharon is here now with the latest from the money markets. In Forex market, the New Zealand dollar lost some ground after data released showed unemployment, job gains and wages growth all missed forecast. The soft labour market data got traders worried of another weak economic print in December quarter. This is particularly important given that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will hold its first policy meeting of the year next week, and markets are already betting for a stimulative approach. Meanwhile, the US dollar enjoyed quite a bit of boost off the back of upbeat trade data and weaker euro. The US trade deficit fell for the first time in six months to $49.3 billion in November. While the euro had lost some grounds amid concerns that the European Central Bank will keep monetary policy loose due to weaker than expected growth and inflation in the common area. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Benaka. Now on to the exchange rates. As said this morning, the Fijian dollar dropped against most. It only had gains against Australia and New Zealand dollars. And now taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices improved to end at $53.81 a barrel. Gold was up to $1.1304 per ounce and silver closed at $15.65 an ounce. In growing Fiji, the price of raw cow milk has increased by 13 cents per litre. Chief Executive of Fiji Cooperative Dairy Company, Kushmendra Prasad, says this has been effective from the 3rd of this month. Prasad says the price of raw milk for the past two years has been 83 cents, excluding VAT, but now it is only 97 cents, excluding VAT. He says the VAT in inclusive price will now be $1.06 cents. Prasad says this will benefit more than 250 farmers to help upgrade their farm facilities and provide growth for the dairy industry. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with all the very latest in sports. Thanks and good evening up ahead in sports. Another Tawai pursues World Cup spot. And super footballers boosted by new inclusions. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Another Tuwai is chasing a spot to represent Fiji, this time in netball. Miriani Tuwai says her husband, Fiji 7-star halfback Jerry Tuwai's commitment to the national team has been her motivation in her pursuit to represent the Fiji Pearls in the World Cup in July. Millie Tavanga caught up with her training and filed this report. And off goes Jerry Tuwai! The name Tuwai is a well-known name when it comes to 7s rugby. However, the same name is now making headwaves in netball. I'm really humbled to be part of the final selection and I want to follow the footsteps of my husband. He has stamped his name in rugby and I'm aiming to do the same in netball. The 25-year-old echoed her husband's advice to follow her dreams. I'm going to keep striving just like what my husband always told me, to keep working hard no matter the circumstances. I'm used to watching him playing and now I want him to watch me play in an international arena. Tuai says being part of the national extended squad is a highlight of her netball career. I want to thank the Lord for guiding me and what he has planned for me this year. This is a great achievement in my netball career. To be able to be a part of the national 25 extended member squad 
is a bonus for me. While her husband is the heart of the Fiji 7's team, for her she needs to do a lot of hard work to be part of the final 12 member squad and carry Fiji's hope in the UK. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Suva Football is working around the clock to find the right combinations ahead of its Vodafone Premier League clash against the bar on Sunday. The team, boosted by new inclusions, is trying to find its rhythm after a shocking 1-0 loss to Tavo last weekend. Vaisnil Prasad reports. Trying to reach a new height in their football career, brothers Yusef Overevo and Ipeli Soukuru are ready to deliver their best shot for Suva this season. For me, uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's a new team for me. Uh, well, uh, based uh, to my performance and all, uh, I have uh, to do much more better and uh, and uh, try and uh, uh, do something not only for me, uh, for the team uh, and for the fans of uh, Suvato. With the injection of Solomon Islands, Michael Bosso and Gagame Feni, Suva has just added more flavor to its side. It's, it's not easy. If you come to uh, a different environment and come here, in Fiji football is a different style of football. So, For me here, I train with them almost one week. And first time I arrived here, play against Lautoka, took me three days. Suva officials have also been working overtime for the match this weekend. So to pick 11 at this stage is really hard. I know who will play and whom, and so we don't ha have those uh, big problem within the team. You know, everyone has to be happy. The management has to be happy. We all working together to set up a formidable side. The Whites have set its sight on winning the VPL title, but the honors will be on these players to perform in the season which has just begun. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Champions Manchester City have returned to the top of the English Premier League with a 2-0 win over Everton. All Blacks midfielder Nani Laumape announced that he has re-signed with New Zealand Rugby and the Hurricanes until the end of 2021. The 25-year-old said family played a big part in his decision to stay in New Zealand. Star Canterbury recruit Dylan Napa admits going through some dark days after the leaking of his infamous explicit videos. Napa is bracing to learn his fate and is likely to be suspended for the opening rounds of the NRL season as a result of the saga. In today's play of the day, despite going down to New Zealand by 80 runs, India's Dinesh Karthik stole the show when he dismissed Kiwi debutant Daryl Mitchell with this catch. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a look at possibly the world's largest collection of bobbleheads. That's coming up. My name is Nan, I'm from Jesse, Prenny North, Mashur, and I'm Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Fiji 2, this is the Sima Nakasi se main Radio Fiji 2 pasand karti hu sunne ke liye Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan main hu Uncle King Singatoka town ke taxi driver they say rugby famous se hoy se Radio Fiji 2 famous se Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan In New Media one of North America's largest life insurance providers recently announced it is switching to a new model where all of its policies are interactive. Customers are encouraged to track and share their biometric data so the company can better assess risk. Some are hailing it as a win-win, but privacy and data experts are concerned about the unintended consequences. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's almost the weekend, but the weather is not in favor. The low pressure system is unusual and is not in favor as we see it. Well, the weather today was quite rainy, but clouds picked up by afternoon and we are most likely to sleep under cover of heavy showers and lightning. Checking the west out for today, cloudy periods with rainy spells expected. East winds from Peck Harbor to Suva, showers and cloudy periods with more heavy showers in store for tonight. And up north, cloudy skies with showers also expected. 
At sea, it's quite rough as southeast winds will gust 20 to 25 knots. For the tides, high tide at 8.24 p.m. with low tide at 2.47 a.m. Sunrise at 5.56. For tomorrow, it won't be as perfect as anticipated showers are likely. Tomorrow's temps, all centres will be cool at 30 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, I don't have any better news as heavy showers are sliding towards us. So stay safe and keep out of flooded areas. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse Night, we asked, should schools have dedicated counsellors to help children? Yes, uh, I, think, I think they should be there just to counsel students what is good and what is bad and to help them getting the future, bright future. It's a really good point to help the children. I think uh, there should be more counsellors in schools uh, considering the environment that we live in now and the exposure that students and uh, kids have nowadays to the internet. Yes, uh, there should be more counsellors in school. Yes, definitely there should be more counsellors in schools to help the students so the students are uh, able to get the correct uh, decision by the counsellors and they are able to make some choices. In my opinion, I think yes, we should have uh, dedicated counsellors in school. In the world of weird and the wonderful, a new museum in Milwaukee may well hold the largest collection of bobbleheads anyone has ever seen. Displaying more than 6,500 figures of athletes, mascots, celebrities, animals, cartoon characters, politicians and more. Recapping the main stories for tonight, PCN director charged by FCCC. More consultations for bus fare increase and dead baby hammerhead sharks found in Suva. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, should players found positive for drug intake be banned for life? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was taken by Mickey. This is the Coral Coast and its beauty, which attracts locals and tourists alike. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I answer. Why I wash it size, Lombasa, and the teletain of our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and sir. We have the Timeli, a one at Tauno Hinatoka, Teletakin and our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. One of the bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Never go funny and a town and go sing a talk, a kit on the Teletakan and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Bula FM, number two, and a sir.